right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Mass Street School Committee meeting of August 22nd, 2018. We call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Uh, 5.03 p.m. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next on the agenda is public comment. I do not believe we have any. Is there anybody signed up? Thank you, Kathy. All right, moving along. Next item is the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe. Do we have a representative from the tribe? We do not. Uh, if they come later on, we'll go back to that, that item. But now we'll move on. Next item on the agenda is the uh, request to name the library, and you have a handout in your packet, page one and two. Uh, it's the individuals, I know Terry's here and, and uh, some other people she brought with her. Uh, if you want to come to the microphone, if you have anything that you want to say about it. Hi. Thank you so much for putting us on your agenda. Um, it was very important for us as former members of the Mashpee School Committee. I have Kathy Lynch here with me, Steve Paxton, Peter Thomas, and Mary Ann uh, McDonald Flaherty could not be here with us this evening. But uh, we literally thought it was very, very important that this town not lose sight of all of the things that Janice Mills did to make the Mashpee Public Schools what they are today. And we thought it was appropriate to name a library after her because she was a voracious re reader. She's the one that started the tradition of giving all the places you'll go uh, Dr. Seuss book out to our graduates. Um, she is the reason we have this building here. Um, we would not have our own Mashpee High School if it hadn't been for Janice Mills. We thought it was really important. Um, as well as she's the reason we're our own superintendency union school district. We used to be with Sandwich. She's the one that was a mover and a shaker to uh, make our own union. So we had our own superintendent and we could do what we wanted to do, what was best with uh, Mashpee kids. I for one, uh, and I know I speak for my colleagues to the left of me, that Mashby uh, would never be the same if we hadn't had Janice Mills here to ferry things through for our children. She never, ever, ever lost sight about what her role was and she reminded us what our roles were when we were on the school board. Uh, it was always to do what's best for kids. She never lost sight of that. And Mashpee's kids have been very fortunate over the years that we had someone that was such an advocate for children and educating our children. And not only just, you know, the reading and writing and the arithmetic, but she made sure that they had a well-rounded education. So it would be... Uh, we think it would be a great honor, and I believe her family concurs with us. We have her daughter, Nancy. Uh, we have the infamous Earl Mills here as well. Um, I believe they, can, <laughs> they concur with us that um, it would be an appropriate thing to name some major feature of these buildings in honor of Janice Mills. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Terry. Thanks, Terry. So I, I guess the, the one question uh, I would have is I know we had discussed talking about the letter um, asked about specifically the high school library that we're currently in. Um, and we had also brought up the idea of the Quashtip Library with it being newly renovated. Um, and that's where we hold our meetings and that's where the school committee meetings are, are held. Um, I know there really wasn't you know, too much of a concern as to which one. I don't know if there was any further discussion on that or what kind of input from any of the... Uh, yeah, I would defer to my the other people that are here, especially her family okay. as well. So. I think one of the things that's important to note, as a woman who was not originally from Mashpee, mm -hmm. um, thank you, Terry. That's hard to follow. Um, was that she didn't lose sight of the education of children, but also of the natives of the town. 
And I think the shape of this library is distinctive and denotes the importance of Native Americans and not only that, but um, what we all share culturally and what we can get from each other. And um, I think that might be something to consider. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Earl Mills, and there is a representative here of the Indian tribe. I'm the chief, the only chief I know, since 1956, and I'm the only one who has any documentation. So I'm the chief, and I represent the tribe. And Janice represented the tribe because she was a, the secretary of the old Indian Meeting House Authority in the early days, when it, that's what it was called, the old Indian Meeting House Authority Incorporated. And Janice was on that board for 50 years. Janice was continually writing about school committee and what her next meeting was going to be. We ran a restaurant. And I, I said, where's, where's the lady that belongs out front? Oh, she's gone to the school committee meeting. <laughs> she was continually going to school committee meetings. She was a teacher herself. She was an English teacher. And then she went back to school and she became a home economics teacher. Just a kind of a change there. I'm not sure how that happened, but that's what she wanted to do. And Janice gave every bit of, well, between the restaurant and, and, and the meeting house and, and helping, you know, uh, uh, at the meetings of the meeting house and, and, and then attending school committee meetings. School committee meetings were not very distant second from being out front to pour a, a Bloody Mary or to uh, grant, grant someone a right to come into the restaurant and, and, and take part in the restaurant. So I see Janice, even though she's my former wife, uh, you know, and passed on, she, she was just a, 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 a rat, just a person that read all the time and was always writing. And, and, and she had a penmanship that, that goes back way before most of you here because they don't write like that anymore with that cursive writing and all of that about what was going to go on at the next meeting. So I just thought I'd let you know the background that I have with Janice and why I think she, she needs some kind of recognition like this. <clears throat> thank you for having thank me you. here. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Anybody else? Anybody else have any questions or comments or anything? I think it sounds like the high school is the Yeah, that's the way on the street now. All right, so I know according to our policy that we had just we adopted uh, a couple of meetings ago, <laughs> uh, the reason why it's not on the agenda to vote is because we're supposed to have a waiting period. So we're going to put it on the next agenda. Uh, was it September 12th, I believe, is our next meeting? put on the next agenda for a vote. Um, I concur, I agree, this is a great tribute, and you know, I personally believe that it's something that we should do, uh, but we will put it on the next agenda for a vote. So. No, thank you very much, I appreciate you all coming in. Yes. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> Only form a school committee members. No better than Terry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice, nice to have some butts in the chairs. Yeah, yeah. I said it was nice to have some butts in the chairs. Yeah. Thanks. Even though briefly, <laughs> it is a little warm. Yeah. Is it Chris? All oh, right. Is it something? Chris? Huh? I think we have some more. Oh, okay, we're gonna. Okay, we'll backtrack now that we do have uh, representative from the. Huh? No, she's not coming. No, you don't want to. No. Maybe you should ask her. Oh, okay. 
So she will be here? Okay, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, in the meantime, we'll move on to the next item, which is uh, the report of the superintendent. I'll turn it over to Mr. Boyle. All right, so we're going to have um, Mrs. O'Brien. Brian Clark to share an update on the Washington School Project. I have. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I don't know if you've driven by Quashnet lately. I know there's a lot of speculation when you drive by. Is it going to be ready? But everything points to go. We are actually ahead of schedule in terms of the windows. Um, we had four classrooms that we are going to relocate temporarily. They'll probably start the year for about a week out of their normal locations. But those windows were not expected to even to start until we were already in school. So we're about two weeks ahead of schedule, which is great. The roof is completely done, but now they're putting the banding around the roof. So that will be completed as well. And they are going to finish that this week. And so we'll be able to check the playground, make sure there is no debris in the playground and be able to open that on time as well. And that's in, the builders will take care of that as well as DPW as well. So that's good news. Today, tomorrow and Saturday, they're going to be finishing up all the tiling by the front entrance and in front of the window area. They had to replace the tiles there, so that's all being installed right now. Um, we had a little bit of a delay with some of the doors with the um, fob access with those, and it's a delay in the materials, not really in the construction. So the main door will be set and some other strategic doors, but that material is coming along. Um, the library looks fabulous. The new rug is down. All of the material, all the new shelving units, the tables are all being delivered tomorrow. So that installation will be taken care of tomorrow, which is great. We do have the new circulation desk in place currently, but it came in two different shipments. So that's really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. The courtyard in the Liberty um, Wing and the new wing of our building is magnificent. It's really, really beautiful. It's all ADA accessible now. So they put in a walkway from one end of it down to the other. It looks fabulous. I don't even want to call it grass. It had been weeds growing in there because they couldn't tend to it during the school year. All of that was stripped out and now there's river rock and where the bushes were against the building, it's been all mulched and pulled back it looks fabulous and we can see it because we can see out of our windows <laughs> which look terrific um, not all of our shades are installed yet they are being put in each classroom will have shades in them about i don't know the number but it, that whole liberty wing does have them currently and the back of the building also has the shades installed so that looks really good the contractors have been working really diligently this week to kind of wrap up, I'll just call it their mess, that they've had throughout the building because as they w have worked in every single bathroom, every single classroom, as you can imagine, their materials are spread throughout the building. Even in the back loading dock, we had a lot of different supplies from the plumbers and um, those have been picked up so we can actually take delivery of paper and math books that are due to arrive either today or, or tomorrow or Friday. So I think the progress is coming along really well. Um, the building isn't going to look like it looks normally when we open in September, but it really is looking beautiful. Um, the windows are terrific, they open. Uh, <laughs> I just can't believe what we're so thankful for. <laughs> windows that open. But um, it does look great. The one bit of construction that will be done this week is there will be a construction wall put up in one of our sixth grade hallways right in the very front of the building when you're walking toward the main entrance all of the windows to the right and 
on either side of the front door. Those windows will be demoed and the framing and the replacements will be done right after school begins. So there will be a temporary construction wall put up in that area. Um, so that's coming, but again, this is ahead of schedule because that wall was going to be put up once students were back in the building, which would have been a little tenuous, but we can do that before students and teachers arrive so it will be less impactful for the students and learning. So, looks good. Um, the fire department came through the other day, the building inspector came through on Tuesday as well, and I can't speak for them, and they're certainly going to come back through, but they let us stay <laughs> in their building, so it's all very positive. So you'll have to come and visit us. I just add about the bathrooms, so they have oh, right. Orient countertop that goes straight across. Every new sink faucet is censored, so you don't have to touch anything. They put new hand dryers in there. Super powerful they are. They work. Four years. <laughs> yes. Fine. I can re I can resign right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the, the new epoxy floor that was in. Uh, well, everything has Mary Kate's touch in it because she picked everything up. It's looking very good today in my office because they've done my windows, but they haven't put the floor in across the top. But the two guys that came in, there, he told me his sole job is they repaint everything before they put that trim piece. That every exterior wall got painted. That's what the, these two guys did. So they have this pretty uh, mm -hmm. well planned system. <coughs> Every student bathroom has a handicap accessible stall right now, where before we did not have one. It's pretty impressive, the work they did. They had to take down cinder block walls, move them back, change the size of even just the door frames to make sure there was enough clearance. Um, the bathrooms look really very lovely. Even in the main office, we had a small bathroom that had to be converted to a handicap accessible unit and it's um, they did it just a beautiful job. The nurse's office um, again had to take down a wall, expand because the nurse's office did not have any handicap accessible bathroom. So mm. now one wasn't touched, one unit, but the other is handicap accessible which will make a huge difference um, for our, just to help our students and to have that available. So it looks fabulous. Even the new toilets are self-flushing. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so it looks terrific, I have to say. Um, our exterior doors, one of the big changes, all of the hallway doors used to have a solid panel so you couldn't see out. And for safety, when the fire alarm went off, you really didn't know what you were going out to. Now there is a glass piece in each of those doors, a little side light along the wind, those doors. That was taken out, so now the doors are much wider than they used to be. And it's just so pleasing to look down the hall and see green trees and to see outside and let that light in. It really gives the school a completely different feel than being closed off and not being able to see outside. Um, it, I'm really very impressed and pleased with the progress so far. That's great. So, great. I'm anxious for the kids and the teachers to see it. They'll love it. And I think one thing Mary Kate talked about in the past, but every exterior door is blue on the outside and also blue on the inside. But if it's a door that opens into a courtyard, they're silver on the inside, so kids will know clearly which doors are exit doors versus just a door that goes mm -hmm. into the courtyard. And I think that was another good one. Yes, that was a, a secondary decision, but I think it makes so much sense and it blends in with that silver color of the windows and the frame. So it just, your vision, you just feel like it's wide, just all makes sense. It's all pulled together. Looks good. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. So are, uh, what happens at, at the start of the school year? Like does the school resource officer go around and check like security wise to just make sure everything's secure and functioning or do you do that or how now that we've had doors replaced and stuff like that all of those doors um we're working with simplex with um a, our security and alarm system they have all been in to check those doors 
because there is a little bit of a delay with some of that material, not all of the doors will have um, that fob access that I was looking for, which, but they'll still have a key access, which will be able to enter or exit for safety reasons. It will be installed, but that probably won't be ready. Um, there are six available units. There are about 12 doors that need to have that okay. put in. So. We'll be in good shape, and I know the fire department, the way they went through the building and um, the building inspector the other day, they would not let it us be there if it wasn't considered safe. Um, Thanks. But, yeah. Anyone else? No. Thank you. I Absolutely. I will tell you, I appreciate the update. Jeff and I were just talking. A little, little bit concerned driving by. Yeah. It, yeah. It looks, yeah. you know, like it's behind. But and, and it's not often that you hear, especially a construction project of this magnitude, that they're ahead of schedule. Yeah. So that's great. Yes. There are parts that are ahead yep. and parts that aren't. But the parts that we need to be ahead on, yeah. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> so I appreciate um, the update. In every day when you're in that building, you see the progress that is being made. The hallways are actually passable now. Um, it truly was all summer a complete construction site. It was a hard hat area and still is. There is, and this is very important to know, there is no public access to Quashnit School tomorrow or Friday. None. You, no one can go in that building. Um, it is considered a construction site. It is a hard hat area, but as of Monday, it will be open. We will be having our instrument rental night on Monday with approval from the fire and the building inspector um, and the contractors. We will be able to have our teachers in all next week. And I cannot say enough about Quashnet teachers. They're amazing. <laughs> they have been so patient, so cooperative. Usually all summer they stop in, they want to do something. Come August, they're in setting up their classrooms. Their first opportunity to come into Quashnet School will be Monday after our opening meetings, which would be after 3 o'clock. So they truly have with our building meeting too, they probably have four days to prepare for students their room. So they have been so supportive, so professional. They're just outstanding. It's a great team, and I really appreciate them for what they're doing. And attitude. Thank you. Yep, Thank absolutely. You. Next in your packet, you have the personnel update, which is actually through um, probably yesterday. Uh, Mary Kaminsky is our BCBA therapist. She's a district-wide physician. Lots of years of experience, and we're very grateful for her at the Coombs School. Our new teachers are Jennifer Blackburn for preschool. Catherine McDonough is preschool. Jessica Ryan is a grade one teacher. And Elena Murphy is a special ed teacher. At Quashnet, there are only two new teachers. Courtney Ream is the EL teacher. David Williams will teach grade six. And then at the middle high school, Eduardo McDonald is the dean of students, grades 10 through 12. Annika Lawson is a math teacher. Grace Wang is the Mandarin teacher. Elizabeth Pierce is a French teacher. Ashley Edwards for special education teacher. And not on your list is Ben Womet as a paraprofessional. We do have one English position um, currently, which I think he has sort of built. Um, I just think she has a good process too. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the Bully Prevention and Intervention Plan that was in the packet. I hope that you had the time to review it. There weren't any significant changes. This is required to be updated, I think it's every three years. Um, the only thing we did was we tweaked a little bit in on the report form and we removed a Coombs form that was in there that didn't seem to make sense. Um, but it's posted, it'll be posted on the website. Our old one is currently posted on the website. This is the DESI requirement and we follow the guidelines. But I think to, uh, I move to approve the bowling prevention and intervention plan as uh, presented. Second. All right, motion by Jeff, second by George. Is there any comments? <coughs> Hearing none. Nicole, how do you vote? Yes. 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 And yes. Unanimous. Okay. <laughs> Update on our essay challenge. We received 33 essays, 32 had the surveys with them. I believe the person that didn't do the survey 
I know who that person is. But anyway, we have, <laughs> well, we, can, we have 32. So Tom Shane has taken a set of the essays, and Nicole has a set, I have a set, Hope has a set, the principals were given a set. To narrow down your top four, there, there are many that are really quite well done and um, informative. And even if it's not a winning one, there are so many snippets of great information in them for me to share that, um, that that's my plan. But we are hoping to meet um, Friday morning to sort of narrow down to see if we have sort of all agreed on top essays and make a selection. If the person who was chosen is available, I would love to have them come to convocation and read their letter on Monday. But that, we don't know if that's how it's going to lay out. It could be a student that went off to college. But um, based on who it is, we were going to wait to decide what kind of a celebration we wanted to do in recognition of the person who would be present. I think it was pretty successful. I mean, I, we might have wanted more essays, but I think there was a lot of confusion we found on the night of the National Night Out. A lot of people that we went up to were like, oh, I thought you had to be a resident, or I thought you had to have to be a parent, so all of that. But um, if we do this on a regular basis, I'm not sure if we will. Even, even that, um, I think more and more people will I think 32 is an awesome group. I think yeah. it'll be yeah, that's a good number. all. Yeah. And Jeff said he'll cover it next time. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> One hundred <laughs> cents. <laughs> Anybody want to add anything to it? No, I was just going to say that I started to go through them, and they are really good. Yeah. I mean, I've only gotten like a third of the way through. I was like, wow, I'm going to need to dedicate some time. Because <laughs> it's going to take a while to get through them and then rank them. And so. But yeah, I think, I think 32 is great. It is. <laughs> Good. Good. So, that's that. Uh, camp Falcon update. I am going to throw over to Mrs. Lake because she is a Camp Falcon. So she knew this. Um, <laughs> Give her a microphone. Dramatic pause. Yeah. Make, sure, oh, to her. make sure you can have a microphone. I don't usually talk into this. And just ahead of time before she shares, I want to yeah. publicly acknowledge Mrs. Lake because oh. really. She's the face of Camp Falcon. She's the behind the scenes planner and the, the amount of work that goes in before if we open on day one is huge in organizing and all of that. And then even throughout the camp, although she's not the administrative assistant working at the camp, she is the go-to person and problem solves all the time. So um, And always puts you. the needs of kids first, which if a kid does not like a session, yeah. Mrs. Lloyd will make sure they can well. change. And that to me, that is interrupt but like, that is ginormously helpful. Okay. I'm glad. So so basically we had about 125 children enrolled in the um, all the five weeks but it's where it's five weeks they can choose to just be there one week two weeks the whole five weeks first session second session because it runs from 8 to 1215 with a break in the middle with a snack and water provided by Camp Falcon. So what we had is we stayed under budget we had 19 activities. The average day, there would be a week, I should say. The first week, there was 166 kids mm -hmm. that participated. And each week, it went down just a little bit. And then the fifth week, there was 91. So we are looking at maybe, you know, we don't need to do the whole five weeks, or maybe we need to offer some different activities. Foods and physical fitness were huge. I mean, we couldn't even, we had, you know, move kids around. So they really like those. And the fact that we were here at Mr. Bell's Strachey School, um, not that we don't love Quashnet. <laughs> <laughs> However, they had a woodworking class, which was like the kids went crazy over. They had a maker space, mm -hmm. and they had a kitchen right there. So when they were doing their cooking classes, they, were, they had everything they needed. You know, last year when we did cooking, we were doing it in a classroom, and the girl had to go down to the cafeteria every time. You know, so it really... We're thinking of possibly suggesting that as a future Camp Falcon. No good deed. Yay. <laughs> and Mark's staff was fabulous to help, because I didn't really know the building very well, so they were wonderful to work with. So overall, the feedback I got so far, we're going to do a survey out to all the homes and to kind of get a feel from what parents thought. But most of the kids were all really excited, loved coming, were very happy. Um, when they weren't happy, we made them happy by putting them somewhere else. That's all. Uh, it was all for fun and learning, but Good. mostly fun. So I'd say it was a, a success. And like I said, we stayed under 
Our budget, Mr. Funk. Yes. <laughs> we did very well because our budget Excellent. was 45 and we did about 38. Oh, well, so we did have 19 activities. We might want to cut it down a little bit, maybe offer more specific, but that's all stuff everyone will look at and put together ideas. So, so you said there were 166 kids the first week? Yes. So how? Well, no. You know, the girl did the numbers for me. That does seem kind of odd. But a lot of kids will stay. Some kids will just take one session. Right. So this was both sessions. What do you mean? So there's a, some kids just come 8 to 10. Oh, I see. And then some okay. kids will come 10, 15 to the 12. But they didn't come to the first session. But then the total. <clears throat> Maybe she did it by session. But it'd be important because. I can break that 166 down. 166 is a lot higher than 125. I know, I know. So. And she broke that down for me. But let me look at it a little bit closer, too. Yeah. Because I know that was kind of confusing me as well. Yeah. We did have a lot more kids the first week, though. Yeah. Another reason I like it at the high school is it exposes the kids that will be coming up here to this environment, and they became very comfortable, and it sort of like would take away, like if you were in fifth or sixth grade, when you eventually <coughs> came up here, you'd have a little bit of comfort level because of that exposure. So mm -hmm. as many things as we can sort of cross over between schools, I think is a good way to do it. Yeah, I thought the kids would be really, you know, confused about the building and everything, but they just came in and within a day they knew where they were heading. No, we're so just we're, the ones that are yeah, exactly. about the yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it worked out really well. If I may. No, go if ahead. we if we if we do decide to move it to the high school, I think it'd be great if we open it up to one more grade and that's mm -hmm. the people that are coming to seventh. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, Jeff, because there were seventh yeah. graders a few that we did take. I mean perfect yeah. introduction to the building and everything. Yeah. 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 No, it's a great idea. I agree. So that's that. And I will look at those numbers better. I also think um, I would be curious to know how many families mm -hmm. we had. So we do have the ability to identify households now. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should yeah. find out how many households we had this year versus last year, <coughs> sure. whether we're growing, whether we're hitting the same families or whether if we tweak something, yeah. we might get more families. I do have um, all that from last year, so I can certainly work on making <coughs> some comparisons there and seeing. Is this the third year? Third year. Okay. Third year. <coughs> and I think this was, did we do five weeks in the very beginning? I don't know if we did. I thought we did four the first so it was year. Four. We did four. That was four. 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 Yeah, four the first year. And I just have mixed feelings about the five. I don't know if it's a little too long, you know, only because the numbers are lower. But the 91 that came the last week, you know, had a good, you know, <coughs> a good experience. So I guess we can just see, but. We're well, trying to figure out too. What are the better weeks? Is it good to have yeah. two weeks of break and then two weeks? Or, mm -hmm. Right. Because you know, they are family vacations, so we don't. That's right. And it was nice because a lot of the kids that were in ESY, which is the extended school year program, were housed there as well. So they would have to attend their, you know, ESY in the morning, or I should say the first session, because I always throw that off. It's all morning, but first session, and then they could hop right over to Camp Falcon. Mm -hmm. So they were able to stay and, you know, we had a son mm -hmm. that did that, yeah. and he loved it. It's a great time, yeah. Yeah, so it. it works out well. I think that's one of the biggest advantages of that Camp mm -hmm. Falcon model is blending of extended school year students with students that are there to just, like, sometimes summer school can have sort of a, an image right. issue, and so yeah. everybody was all together. Yeah. And it, it helps, I think. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank Thanks, you. Kathy. Thank you You're welcome. Much, Kathy. I think I handed out to you a schedule for convocation. It's the one with the big national public schools across the top. That's just for your information. You're welcome to come. I, um, Chris is making a convocation I will be there, yes. Speaking. <laughs> Speaking to <laughs> <laughs> um, But you are all welcome to attend any of the events all day. Um, but that's just for your information. We'll make sure you get it. Come to lunch, George, or <laughs> <laughs> She knows who that is. <laughs> she knows who we're going to lunch. <laughs> oh, we can't be there. So that is Monday, yes. We can't be there. So, um, are you good with looking like that? Oh, yeah. School choice update is the next page in the packet. And so you'll see that um, we were offering 38 seats this year. We currently filled 16 of them. 
way too spicy. What is that, places? For total? Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, you wanted to know what our total school choice students would be. So I know, I know I had it at one time. I knew the number of seniors who left. Oh, you do it with how many yeah. left? Oh, well, approximately. I thought it was five. Okay. But I will have that. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Do you uh, how many graduated Total last year? How many, school how, many, how many graduated? How many school choice kids graduated? Yeah. I think it was five. Five. That would bring it down to approximately 45. We had... A, 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 um, no, we, we have like 100. We had 100. I'm sorry. Yeah. We had 100, so five. Bring it down to 95. But well, we don't know how many of these we are new. How many yeah. Are new. I, they're all new. Yeah. Also, oh, the 16s are all new. Right. So we should have a net gain. Well, well, basically, net gain, right? 110, 111, yeah. right in yeah. that ballpark. I can email you that too as well. Mm -hmm. But so we, we should be out, I mean, coming out higher up if we didn't lose 16. Yeah. But some people right. do lose who were choices. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And, and that'll yeah. fluctuate all year. Right. Yeah. And then they make the adjustment at the end of the year. And that's what we bring forward. We just had several withdraw actually school choice kids that I just got notification of. So a lot of that's happening now at this time of year, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, does anybody else have any questions or comments on anything? Right, well, thank you very much, man. All right, I've seen uh, Natana walk in. So we are going to go back to the agenda item for the uh, update from the Mashpee Wampanoag truck. Yeah. <coughs> hey, everybody. Hi. Um, so the update from education um, right now is that there are going to be a lot of changes this year. Um, so you may or may not have heard that I resigned as the education director um, as not of... Not oh, not there you go. <laughs> um, so the, by the, at the end of this month, I will no longer be uh, in education. Actually, I'll be going back to language part-time as the teacher, teacher fluency trainer. Um, but so we will be welcoming in Roxanne Brown as the new director. Um, she's fantastic and we're really, really lucky, really lucky to have her. Uh, she has a ton of experience at the federal level um, with Indian education. Um, she's, she is a tribal member, um, actually the daughter of Uncle Earl who was just here. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's exciting. There also um, will be a change in the college readiness to, um, program as manager for that program is also uh, resigning at the end of September so that job is I believe being posted this week so be more to come on who will be in charge there um, so uh, but other than that we're you know it's pretty much business as usual everything's scholarship is um, lots and lots of students taking advantage of that um, and you know programming is being planned and we're we're up and running getting ready for the school year so um, yeah so um, and I just wanted to add from the language department perspective, um, we will continue to collaborate with Natana. I've kept um, Principal Balistracci and Mr. Rumberger updated. So she had offered one day a week of the high school language class last year, and we have grant funds to sustain that commitment through our department. Um, so she'll still be co-instructing the high school Wampanoag um, Pasek and niece classes, so levels mm -hmm. one and two. And she'll also be working for us a couple of days a week, um, helping boost the language fluency levels of our teachers. So mm -hmm. one of the challenges we found for our second language learner teachers and working with very young children is that there's a lot of repetition in your day. And so as a speaker of Wampanoag language, it can be a challenge to continue to grow. So we're really fortunate that we've been able to bring in some grant funding over the summer that will enable us to contract with Natana um, as she works with us part-time and then also is with her fellowship, um, which is actually a research position that also looks at some of the work that we're doing in early childhood language education. Um, and then I also wanted to just bring back to your attention, we had talked in, I believe it was May or June, about recognizing Makayasek Wiku as a private, um, tribally operated school in Mashpee 
and just wanted to let folks know that we've exchanged some information in terms of student assessment and the way that we track our students' progress toward um, common core standards. So that conversation is, is ongoing. Um, we'll have a very small first grade cohort, um, probably only two or three children this fall, but we've been awarded some new grant funding so that we're going to implement teacher training so that we're able to add up to grade four over the next several academic um, cycles. So we do hope that our class of 25 children this fall will continue to expand incrementally over the coming years. And at the same time, we'll also be slightly reducing the amount of Wampanoag language instruction during the day. So the kids now are receiving between 75 to 85% of their school day in Wampanoag. And as they get into grade three and four, that will start to come down a little bit. We're still working out what those percentages will be. Um, but we're very attuned to helping them transition successfully into an English dominant environment and thanks to our partnership with Natana we'll be able to continue to offer those supports um, and we're still waiting as well to hear about the grant proposal that we submitted with the superintendent's office to the U.S. Um, Department of Education's Office of English Language Acquisition so that would offer some comprehensive K-12 language literacy opportunities in both English and Wampanoag. Um, but we also did arrange to offer some after school programming, um, regardless of whether the funds are awarded. So the Department of Ed is usually about a month behind in making their awards. So that they usually anticipate notification by early to mid August. So we think that probably means mid to late September. <laughs> so we're just sort of proceeding as though we'll be offering some QuashNet after school programming a couple of days a week and then if we get this OELA grant um, we'll be able to offer three days weekly at Coombs and QuashNet or a combined um, opportunity for children in Wampanoag language so that's the updates that we have from from our department but you will still get to see Natana as will yes. we so <laughs> just my last day here as, as the education and so. we've all worked with Roxanne previously. She was the assistant director of tribal planning and mm -hmm. is really a fantastic writer and communicator and educator. So we're really excited to, to work with her going forward. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Oh, can I ask a question? Yes, I will. <laughs> um, the Quashnet after school programming, is that for just tribal kids or all kids? I believe it's for children in the Indian Education Program, okay. um, but we haven't actually finalized that process yet. I think we talked about it as an opportunity for tribal children because there are lots of other opportunities, but we well, didn't. That definitely got worked out. Yeah, it wasn't really finalized. It's sort of equal access conversation, yeah. so we have to talk about that. Yeah, I was just thinking about like the after school clubs and how it would be. I didn't know if that was, if that's what you were referring to or something different, just in Indian Ed. It would mimic the after school, like we talked about having it be an after school club, right? Like knitting was, or you know, yeah. um, or the comic books, right? Classes, exactly, or, but yeah. doing some of that through the use of the language, mm -hmm. so um, that was sort of. <clears throat> I think our teachers are open to working with other children. You know, we found like with the high school class, it tends to be predominantly tribal children who enroll in these opportunities because it's something that's important in their household. Yeah. Um, so that might continue to be the case with the after school programming. I see, I look at it the, the flip of, which is if we created opportunities, maybe younger grade levels, that then you might see more um, non Wampanoag kids interested in high school yeah. um, I'm just really keen on this idea of really just sort of building the, the community together mm -hmm. and I understand uh, everything that you guys are doing and, I, and it's important in its own right but um, I just I want to see us grow together too absolutely you know yeah, um, and I think um, so it'll be primarily 2d or Eleanor Coombs offering the after-school programming um, and she has, in her work with lunch bunches, especially at Quashnet School, often offered a bring a friend day right. to lunch mm -hmm. bunches because it is something that other kids really want the chance to learn the songs or learn more about some of the games and activities. So it may be something that um, children are interested in participating in after school as well. And I, I know Tootie has been very welcoming to 
to working with whatever children have been interested in attending. So. Yeah, I think one of my kids went to one of those ones. Oh, great. Um, and then you mentioned earlier up, up to grade four over the next few academic cycles. Do you mean school years? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just was checking. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And I just want to add, we took our new, new employees today. We, one of the stops on our bus tour was the tribe. We had a great tour. Trish was fabulous. And what was really um, impactful for me is there was a summer camp going on and the kids were learning about the owl mm -hmm. and I don't know who was teaching it, um, but the kids were so engaged and I learned the difference between the hawk wing and the owl <laughs> wing and how silent the owl wing is and that's mm -hmm. why at night they can rely on their hearing because they're not flapping like mm -hmm. the hawk. But it, it was just, I was so happy that all of our new employees got to see the face of <coughs> our children in that setting and um, so I was, it was a great experience for everyone. So, thank you. so are, do you have plans um, to reach out to Roxanne where we can have a, or have you already met her? Or? Well, that's the first time I oh. we, She was just hired, I think, earlier, oh, okay. earlier last week. So it's, she hasn't started yet. She starts um, Monday. But she and, I are, uh, she and I will meet next Thursday about sort of the transition and I'll you know, make sure she has all the right contacts and everything too. Okay. One of the things I mentioned today in an email exchange was just when we were going to do the fall meeting at mm -hmm. tribal headquarters. And so if we were going to do October like we did last mm -hmm. year, we'd need to make that decision pretty quick. Okay. So if you could just put that on your... Yep. She, yeah, she and I have talked about okay. um, just the partnership meetings in general. So she's okay. aware Great. of that and, and this as well. Thank you. We loved having you. Thank you And very much. I'm glad that you're not going anywhere. Yeah, no, I, I know here. you couldn't get away if you tried, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> so true. Yeah. But, Even uh, the fellowship is really back, circling back again. <laughs> yeah. But your your leadership over the last year has really been um, appreciated. I, I'm speaking for myself, but I know everyone else agrees, and um, I'm grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't know whether Tim Rumberger had extended the invitation. I told him to about Monday is our convocation, and it's an all-day PE. There's different pieces, but you're welcome to attend. If Ro I know it's a first day, so Roxy mm -hmm. probably would want to do that. But um, Anyone that works with, with the schools is welcome to attend. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? No, I'm just waiting for the adult language classes. <laughs> 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 right. Keep it in mind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have the report of the business administrator, Paul Funk. Well, yep. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, tonight, I have. Um, before you, uh, you have a list of all the student activities for the high school and the middle school. You noticed um, uh, when we first presented, when I first presented the student activity accounts, guidelines, and procedures, we had in there um, a list of numbers. Now we have assigned um, um, after school programs, activities um, to those numbers. You'll notice that the account number is pretty simple. Starting with 101, one is the high school, two is the middle school. So you'll see on the second page, um, the middle school um, student activities and the high school on the first page. Basically, the, the high school and the middle school are the only two schools that have actually specific um, student activities. The elementary schools have accounts but through those accounts go their picture money, go the uh, Stop and Shop um, A1 uh, program, which brings in, uh, I sat with uh, Mary Kate last week, brings in quite an amount of money. And what they do is throughout the year, they spend that on field trips and, and um, things uh, for the student. Uh, as I said, when we first started this student activity, these are student activity monies. Uh, they are the students' monies, and they were spent at the discretion of the principals. So uh, the high school is a little different. They're, they're, each of these clubs raises funds. Uh, you'll see the first uh, balance sheet uh, at the October meeting um, that will um, uh, uh, give you an idea of a starting point of what kind of funds each of these accounts have. And I plan to, I plan to uh, report out briefly at, at the uh, finance meetings in a quarterly fashion. So you'll see four times a year. So you'll see a balance sheet. 
in October, the next one will be January, and so forth. So the first thing I need is approval of these student activities for the high school, and since there aren't any for the elementary school, we're only voting on these particular accounts, activities. And middle school also? Pardon me? High school and middle school. Yeah, we can vote on them together. Okay. Yep. So moved. May I? Okay. I second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, motion by George, second by Nicole. So, um, uh, what's interest? There are two accounts, and I, I'll go through it briefly. There's what we call an agency account. So all, all the funds go into what they call an agency account, which is an interest-bearing account. Then there is the checking account. And at the last meeting, I, the last finance meeting, we had a discussion about what the balances were going to be in the checking account. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's, there's money in, this money's earning interest. So all of these clubs have balances. They can be anywhere from $10, to, uh, I'll use figures, to hundreds of dollars. They're earning interest. <clears throat> what happens is the um, if they're going to need a check, they're going to have to do a, <clears throat> a warrant, which you sign. We move the money from the agency account into the checking account. Okay. But the checking account was voted last week not to have a balance of more than $10,000. Okay, at any one time. And that's if we needed to get a check out rather quickly without going to the warrant. And we have, we've had those inst instances where the treasurer, the town treasurer, would move that money. Um, so that's basically what it is. So the interest each month goes into that interest account. So it's its own? It doesn't yes. Okay. Now, the... Um, the principal can determine how he wants to expend that. Um, okay. That's fine. I just wanted to, and what's PP, PBIS? Oh, okay. Uh, PB. Positive behavioral interventions and supports. Okay. The clubs, you know, I, I just kind of typed the, what they give me. <laughs> so that's why I have Mr. Balastracci here tonight with me to explain any club that I... What's FBLA? Future Business Leaders of America. Um. We should write that out. <laughs> I, I will I will correct that <laughs> and, and on the next copy. And then why are there um, se several accounts for CTE? CTE oh, has oh. several programs under its purview. Yeah. Okay. So for example, if something goes into the ProStar program, the 106, uh, 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 that one, um, I'll, uh, I'll take, Mr. Bellastracci. Um, I, I, I split the 106. 106 is uh, career and technical education. <clears throat> when we did the, um, We Are Mashby, hashtag We Are Mashby, we set up a subdivision of the 106. Uh, the, um, hashtag um, We Are Mashby is 106A and Career and Technical, all oh. his other accounts are under 106B. I and I just did that because we wanted to separate that out. And you're going to see the balances in those accounts separately. So is there a 106, a 106A, and a 106B? Or is there just? There's there, there's a 106A. That's, that's a hashtag We Are Mashby, the, 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 the store. And then there is uh, career and technical education. Okay, They're so two separate. Okay, yeah. so we should just amend this list because it looks like there's three accounts right now. Okay. You I'll know, just it. yeah. Yep. So that was why I was asking. Would you like me to put separate numbers or? No, no. It just it looks like there's three. Okay. 106, 106A, and 106B. Yeah, I should. Yeah. <coughs> so I there's think no that's. 106. There's no 106. You can say that. Yeah. Right. I understand. Yeah. I'll, I'll just take that out. But that, that was the purpose. We wanted to separate those out. I think that was a discussion Mr. Looney had with Mr. Bellastracci and keeping those two separate. Yeah, that's but fine. still under career that and technical. Makes education. sense. Okay. Totally get it. Should we have the agency accounts on here? Pardon me? Do we have the agency accounts on here? You agency. will when you see them, absolutely. But I mean they're not here. So shouldn't they be on No, here? no, no, no. There's one agency account. Not one for high school, one for middle school, just one period? No, there's one for each of them. Okay. Yeah, but one agency account 
for all of the... Right, right, but should, oh, this, okay. should we be approving that account as well? Uh, no. no. You don't have to. You'll see it, but then it'll all break down. So in other words, you're going to see the agency account. When, when, when I... Um, I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to follow the, follow the rules in our, our new document. Right, right. And it these follow the rules. Student activity accounts. If we don't consider the agency account a student activity account, then okay. Well, but it seems to me it is a big student activity. activity. Well, the, the agency account is made up by the student activity accounts. So you've got a, to <coughs> a total in the student uh, agency account. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's uh, $100,000. And you've got 10000 in your checking account. So you've got $110,000, 100000 in the agency account, 1000 in the checking account. Then what happens is um, all of the, um, the student activity accounts, <coughs> they will take that $110,000 $110, and we'll break it out. So it's almost like you're reconciling. What's, when you vote these accounts, you're reconciling back to the agency account and the checking account. So by voting on these, you're actually voting for those accounts anyway. Okay. Is it? Am, am no, I, hey, no, am no. I, I'm not going to split hairs, man. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> you're actually. Yeah. Asking a question. Does anybody else have any questions on it? Which GSA? Case straight line. Case straight line. Ah. Government service administration. <laughs> Can somebody please get Nicole an acronym? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll correct those. You know what? I'm with you. I didn't notice. I'll, I'll correct those. Yeah. There's, and then there's just a little typo, too. Okay. So you can have my copy. Anyone else? Thanks. Are you good? Yep. We can keep going. No, that's good. <laughs> you know, editorial. It's my forte. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion on the table uh, for approval of the current student activity accounts by George, seconded by Nicole. Uh, if there's no more questions or discussion, uh, Cole, how do you vote? Yes. 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 And yes. The second vote tonight is on the, um, the student activity account itself. You want it? I got it. Okay. Got it. By voting uh, the student activity account, you are voting that you are going to be in compliance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 71, uh, Section 47 which we've gone over, which is also in your um, policy manual. It's referred to in your policy manual as stated down below. Uh, I just need a vote on this. We have gone over this many, many times. Yep. So, and, and may, Mr. Chairman, yes. we discussed this at the last finance working group. Right. Yes. And our recommendation is to approve. Okay. So. All right. So that being said, I know there's a lot of questions and stuff submitted over the last few meetings. Yeah. So if everybody's satisfied and anybody wants to make a motion, so I'll take a motion now. I move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve uh, the student activity account guidelines and procedures by Nicole and seconded by George. Any other discussion? Uh, just to make m the other committee members aware that I requested that in six months we have this on an agenda to get some feedback from how it's going and, mm -hmm. and whether we need to reorganize the document at all. I was assured that this was a living document, and <laughs> while I may not agree with the is. organization, that it is flexible and can be changed in the future. So, yeah, 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 yeah we can always. I just want to have the power to change it. Yeah, the, 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 the we main. We plan on reporting about quarterly. Yeah, know? in other words, yeah. you know, uh, uh, December would be the end of the, the second quarter. So yeah. we're going to start from uh, July 1st of this year. You'll see that uh, the first quarter is September 30th. We'll, we'll, uh, then October well, this isn't really an assignment for you. It's really an assignment for Mark and and the folks using this to see to make sure that it makes sense and right. that right. it if right. there, we didn't miss something or there isn't a bunch of redundancies, right. things we can streamline or right. something. Like Basically, that. what so. you're, you're you're voting on is is the um, the actual law and then right. everything <clears throat> that we put into this is backing it up. Yeah. Great. Be good. Finally, get this approved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no further discussion, Nicole? Yes. 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 And yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. All Thanks, right. Paul. Next item on the agenda is uh, specifically unassigned and uh, specifically assigned unfinished business, and we have the school committee working group updates. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Boer again. So, I think we talked about the finance working group, which has met. One thing that you have in front of you is a list of capital improvement items. And the finance working group looked at this. It's been a little bit edited since we met. 
And mm -hmm. also, I uh, met yes, yesterday, Tuesday, met with uh, town manager Rodney Collins and Wayne Taylor, the assistant town manager, to review this. Uh, they like how it was organized. They had some ideas in terms of things that might fall in a different category, like uh, using community preservation money to look at all the fields and see what's going to happen with, with all of that. So if you look at it, the technology upgrades, um, we, they wanted to sort of break out what, what is sort of an annual expense, so the first two are annual, then there's some one-time charges in there. Under the school security, except for maybe the visitor tracking badge system, the, the other four bulleted items are very DPW-ish. Um, so in a conversation, that may be something that lands in DPW. Uh, what they did show me just as an aside yesterday was the warrant article that it will be on October's the town meeting where they're adding a school committee member or designee to the capital improvement planning committee. They are also adding an, another member at large, so there'll be seven. They have to have a non member. But that's, um, that's really that's awesome. Fine. Yeah. Good. And they, they were in agreement with, you know, all of the things that we talked about on this list. What I told them is that the school committee, you know, would prioritize them and decide, you know, which things order operations. So I don't know if you want to ponder it and then everybody give feedback. We're going to talk about it tonight, but that was something um, that started as a review of the um, yeah. finance working group. We also, in the finance working group, looked at a draft of the narrative for budget FY20, and then it was basic, it wasn't built, and then all the different things we agreed we wanted to put in it, so that's We discussed the budget uh, timeline as well to ensure that we're meeting all our timelines, and I think we'll meet that, and that's part of the narrative. And I didn't, wanted to talk about the CIP real quick, because we had a lot of discussions about this, and we did not accept this as written, by the way. Um, and we had a lot of questions specifically about the technology upgrades that Mr. Funk owes us answers back. Uh, specifically, we asked about the wireless overhaul of question and Coombe, so we wanted some more information on that. Um, well, what Sean Maroney had said was the previous sort of upgrade were dropping um, access points. Access yeah. points when we were doing testing. This is a much broader. The teacher PCs, he's, he has a, he has a, a multi-year spreadsheet, and basically it's fifty thousand dollars per school. But so that includes all of the schools. You want to space it out and do it with the bus. I think we. I mean, we we were we were comfortable with everything. I mean, that was a great list. I just know we had. I know George specifically had some questions about the first one, and specifically that he wanted the safety to be the number one priority. But that's really. As far as I think we went for recommendations, yeah. unless you have anything else, George. I got a couple of questions. Just on what Patty said right now um, on the two things that were annual. What did the uh, town manager say on um, technology upgrades? So they want to be able to to sort of <coughs> refine this number, and if they're going to lay it out in a multi-year plan capital, they would they would want to know which ones are going to be recurring and which mm. ones are going okay. to be mm -hmm. once every five or ten years. And on the security upgrades, uh, the decision was made that that's um, public works to put that in? No. I was going through this, and I know that we asked for additional doors to be clogged at Coombs this year, and through DPW, the quote was $5,000 a door. But that is, that, that's a facility. It's no different than the, the locks and the systems being put into the Washington Project. Those really are. So, so whoever, whatever umbrella it falls under, it's us saying that we really want this done. That some of it oh, does okay. fall under. Okay. <coughs> we are very excited about number three because it's much lower than we previously <laughs> anticipated. It yeah. does seem like it. Yeah. yeah. The other thing we didn't do is the uh, the list we uh, requested that Patty when they submitted it did not prioritize any of it, so the school committee could have a chance to look at this and decide right. which so is number one, two, mm -hmm. three. Right. That sort we of thing. We went over that yesterday with Rodney. That that's why. So I have a question about that though because I would be asking you to tell me what you think is the most important. Which I, I, I did in that meeting and I did as well but it really needs to be sort of I think a decision. The 
the technology is ongoing and we've become very reliant and that's an important piece in the building security. Now our buildings are secure and I don't feel concerned whether this is put off, you know, because this is FY20 requesting so it's something that's going to happen right now anyway. But the building security improvements are definitely something I want to do. The auditorium is just a continual um, source of stress for using it. That really needs to be attended to, too. So. But this, so are you saying you sort of tiered this in your priority order? Uh, mm. could say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or is this the biggest number at the top? I mean, it's, it's. No, no. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, yeah. you got roughly a million dollars here? Although it's not totaled. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty, it's about it. Yeah. yeah. 992 is what oh, I get. A question mark. And then there's a question yeah, mark at the yeah, end. Yeah, so. that's going to be. That's, the piece about the, the fifth one down there about the um, fields and, and just the general condition of the fields. Fixing a lot of fields could be community preservation money, but I do think that that's going way after a point to point, is what you said. But Wayne was um, figuring that there were ways to um, work with that. So I think giving them this list early enough sort of channel like maybe this would be uh, there might be some options that they know about. Do we have any information on um, previous capital improvements? Like so I just joined the school committee, you know, so I'm new. How do I know what you guys have prioritized over the last five years, say? The only thing I'm aware of has always been technology. Yeah. And I've gone to like the build planning construction and they've reviewed a sheet. There are a lot of school things on there, but they're plant-based, like a generator here, so things I never stuff. knew. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but no one ever had conversations with us. So this is really the first time that I recall that we've actually tried to get them. Wow. First time as a, as a board that we've done this. Oh. Oh uh, yeah, so I'm here for a first. Congratulations, yeah. first. Yeah. first time. Well, thank you. And, uh, you've been here a year and a half. You're yeah. no longer new. Yeah. <laughs> Newest. That excuse me. Exactly. <laughs> well, so I, I just, just when I think about the school committee, I, I I see my role as advocating for the district and the administration. So I I think, but I do have opinions about what I think would be good investments, but I wouldn't, I don't feel like it would be appropriate for me to, if you think security is the most important thing, then I, I got to go with what you think. Um, I, I would, I guess, like the opportunity to argue that I think some, some infrastructure that enhances programming outside of technology, things like the sound system and the lighting and the auditorium and, and the quashnet gymnasium and things that are, have been persistent and ongoing problems, are um, a good investment because it actually increases the overall quality of the school and all of our programming and offerings that are, you know, it's sort of, to me, it, it's sort of our presence to the public because these are where all the events and all of the um, activities that the school is, is showcasing <coughs> occur in those venues. And um, if we've made a lot of investments in classrooms and infrastructure, then I would say let's, let's hit something that that is visible to folks inside and outside the school. So that's my little on-the-spot plug. Please don't let me go to another performance where the mic's cut out. I feel really bad for those <laughs> actors. Last night was yeah. tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That was. So I wasn't even there, but I just took a stab in the dark. <laughs> and I guess I would, I would also, in, in a way, agree, but at the same time. So you look at the technology. Um, there are some upgrades that I can say probably absolutely needed. For instance, the, the uh, replacement of the teacher PCs, um, having been in a lot of the classrooms, especially in Quashnet, uh, they're extremely old. Yeah. Uh, but then when you look at some of the other things like, you know, reducing the number of servers, I can see how that would be important and it would also save energy and things like that. But really, is it necessary right now? So, you know, it's even within the groups, I would say, okay, maybe some of the technology things are a priority, but maybe not the entire group, uh, where I would say, for the most part, security, I would put above some of the things in technology. So that's kind of where, where I wouldn't necessarily be able to prioritize them as a group, because I think certain things inside of groups are more important than other whole groups. So. It's good. 
Good point. Yeah. And as I mentioned at the uh, finance working group, the security thing would be my top priority. Mm -hmm. And I know just to sort of um, add to the polls, Mary Kate had added that the gym teacher at the Washington School feels that the current condition of the floor does contribute to more student injuries. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not including the parent PTO basketball oh. game. Which <laughs> 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 yeah. is Careful. Yeah. <laughs> what? Believe me, if I got up there and played basketball, I would be hurt in the first five minutes of the game. Did it one year? Nothing to do with it. Was it no. <laughs> well, I'm excited to advocate for whatever we come up with. I think with. this is great. I think it's great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. When do we have to give the town manager the capital improvement budget? Is that the 25th of September? Or is I that? No, I don't. I don't think it's right at the beginning. I think it's further. But I, I just posted it to him. <coughs> listen. You know, his timeline. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I mean, so, you have it. So we'll yeah. um, sort of line it up, but I think I, the admin team maybe can do it to be beneficial to us since they live in these roles on a daily basis. So I was surprised to hear that there are issues with student injuries and issues with the Yeah. Things like that. Very and I mean, the committee agrees. I mean, it wouldn't be too much trouble if you really wanted our input on priorities. Um, obviously, I wouldn't suggest it be <coughs> it'd be all say all. Um, but if you did a line item and maybe put it into something with a drop down, you know, maybe like a survey monkey or something, but with a drop down, I don't know how many items are on here. Uh, it looks like roughly 12, uh, and then you just select one through 12 on each line item, and kind of prioritize it that way. I don't know. Just a suggestion. No? I don't think we can do that. Yeah. yeah. No. If we vote on it afterwards, we can't do that. What are you talking about? Because we're, we're, we're out of open meeting, providing guidance on how we're going to vote at a meeting that's not open. If only no, she's if only she's seen. Patty. So Patty emailed us. So kind of like we do oh, with I the... Oh, I see. Uh, so then they're going to provide the information at the meeting. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of like we do for our uh, school, school committee. Uh, Come on now. Yes, sir. Goals and that sort of yeah. <laughs> Still, though, do you feel like you could rank these? I don't know if I could or not, but that's why I kind of, if we want to do it, if the committee decided we wanted to do any kind of prioritizing, that's the way I would suggest we do it. I mean, I'd like I to see Patty's like rank, and then I yeah. might ma advocate for something I feel strongly about, but... Yeah, whatever yeah. whatever you decide. <laughs> but you I don't think I could, I could rank yeah. these. No, I can't rank but you did already. I mean, you made really good comments about what you thought needs to be. Oh, I, yeah, but whether, but if, but she said security could wait a year, you know. So yeah, if yeah. if well, Patty no, doesn't think it, so, well, I think what she meant there is that if it goes in the FY20 budget, we this won't see the security improvement. It's all FY20 for a year. Yeah. Right. Because the bud, the money won't be available for another year. So you weren't saying that wasn't a high pri the highest priority? I thought that's what you said. No, it is. I mean, in my my world, if by the end of this. But these are up. This is everybody understands. These are upgrades. These aren't holes in our security that we're trying to fill. Yeah. 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 However. Yeah. Yeah. We would argue. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I guess we'll leave it at that. I can't even remodel my kitchen for $25,000. How do we do three kitchens in three no, schools? No, no. no, that's just an ongoing. Equipment replacement and upgrades. I can't believe we can do anything for twenty-five grand. Well, it would be every year, so different pieces could be. Oh. Yeah. No, no. So, so by the time we. Like a steam yeah. oven one. Yeah, yeah, we had, yeah. Oven yeah. over in high school. I see. So it's that. just a number in each year we decide what it's going to yeah. be. Mr. Okay. Gus. Mr. Gus. Yeah. All right. Does anybody else have anything on that? Because what do you think the percentage of original Jeff equipment does. is? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of it. A lot of it. Are, 80 percent? 70 percent? Oh, I don't know about 80. 50 percent? Maybe 50. Yeah. No, we keep fixing them. A lot yeah. of the, you know, naturally the, refri the, the refrigeration, you don't, you know, the walk-in, yeah. you don't replace. Yeah. You just replace you the, uh, yeah. the uh, comp compressors. You mean that pump? I'm sorry, sir? Did you mean that pump? Oh, did you get a pump? You no, said no. Cool. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't. That was no, completely no. <laughs> uh, unplanned. Yeah. I missed that. Yeah. 
this stuff. I don't know if there's any other updates. We have not scheduled the efficiency event. We have. We have. It's September 7th. Oh. <laughs> September 7th or 9th? Oh, was it? I believe it was the 7th. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it was the 7th. We had, and we have the next we had contacted Gail. Gail contacted us and we responded. We got that too, right, Nicole? The next outreach we got taken care of and yeah, also that's the next finance working group. Is September 18th, that I remember. Yeah, yeah outreach the is the 20th. And I was just going to say 18th. that I think these meetings are when we should say to each other, hey, these are when the next meetings are, so if you have anything for these work groups, you need to direct your questions or comments or concerns to those work group members. Sounds good. Or do we do that here? Like you bring them to this meeting? Bring them to this meeting or I'm not, that? I'm not keeping up. Could you say that one more time? Could you try that again? So, so we have these working groups, mm -hmm. the three, to work on our goals. And these full school committee meetings are the only meetings where we, the full group gets to talk about what is happening in those working group meetings. So what I was just gonna say is that the outreach group is gonna meet on September 20th, which is me and Jeff. And so if you have ideas or things that gotcha. we need, you want us to take up or discuss yep. or what you think we should be doing based on kind of how we left things at the retreat, I would love to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have anything okay. right now. <laughs> that makes sense. That's a good point. But I think we have another school committee meeting before that meeting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But also at any time, too. So if somebody does next week, an idea pops in their head, they can always contact Patty and say, hey, I have this great idea. Mm -hmm. Would you mind bringing it to the, yeah. to the uh, working group and see what they think of it? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just, I guess what I, I, I just want some general direction from the broader yep. board about, you know, what we're doing and, and you know that we're working on this plan and we're going to administer a survey again, but last year was kind of the first time, so I felt like that's all we kind of accomplished last year, but this year we kind of have that to build off of and so. What are you talking about? Well. An amazing presence at the. I felt like yeah. that, I felt that's all I did last year. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put that that way. Yeah. 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 Well, that was this year. That's kind of this FY. Yeah. Very. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I don't have any ideas, but I will a little feedback. I, I will say, you know, the things that have been going on have uh, been great. You know, a lot more outreach a lot more presence than I've seen in my time being in the committee. So oh, good. the work that's been going on, I would say that, you know, my feedback would be that it's been good stuff. Okay, good. But I don't have any ideas going forward. All right, that's fine. <laughs> so keep it up. Yeah, you're awesome. <laughs> keep working. We have a place for the school group at October Fest, ah. which I believe is October. Is that on Columbus Day weekend? It normally is. Soon to potentially be indigenous people. No, it's sort of early. Actually. Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. For us at yeah, schools. Yeah, yeah, Well, I will make sure I let you know. But we've already done the paperwork. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay, next school custodian. Just to share out when we had our meeting town manager and assistant town manager, we had a pretty um, robust conversation about this topic. And I think we sort of landed where um, we were going to look at um, working through the current MOU that we have in regards to vacants and custodians with that route. They, um, there would be a lot of things to work out, but it seemed to be um, moving in a direction where principals would have or school personnel would have more input and um, oversight on the study of other programs. And I think we landed with the Landed what, I'm sorry? No, it was, all of the options were discussed and what we said was we needed to bring it back to the committee um, to kind of share the feedback from the town manager and assistant town manager, which was really good kind of thinking, I feel like it was a great discussion, um, and then you would direct us <coughs> where we would go next. Um, and so, do you want me to keep talking about what 
they said, okay. Um, so the, one of the options that was put out on the table was using the MOU as the vehicle through which we um, change the way um, or better support the custodians in our buildings to meet the needs of the kids um, and giving the principals the control over the individuals in their buildings. And so by adapting the MOU and the evaluation part of those employees, and it was custodians not maintenance, right. um, it would be something under the lines of, of, of the principals are doing the evaluation in terms of their interaction with kids, interaction in the building, that type of thing, and then there would still be a DPW component of overseeing the sort of technical pieces of the custodial job. So that was probably the biggest option we discussed in the most detail, but everything was on the table in terms of where, and, and we really just wanted, we just didn't want to speak for the committee in any way. We just wanted, told them we wanted to open the lines of communication. So maybe this is a good topic for the next finance working group. Start there. Because I, I know me, I think this is a, just, just me speaking, but I, because I'm the one who's been pushing for this so hard. I guess it's a great interim step, but I still, my ultimate goal is for the custodians to be part of the school district. Um, and if it takes five years or past my tenure, that's fine. But I think that we need to, I think we should have a final goal in mind and having the, given more MOU power to the principals while they still have a supervisor that doesn't answer to the principals. And the fact that we have to have an MOU to control people that are in our buildings is not the end game, not right? That's game, just yeah. a, I think, a Band-Aid. So, one of the things we did discuss, though, was the financial implication of that. Right, so right. That's certainly a finance working yeah. group conversation, yeah. but just for the whole committee of, if they come back to the school completely, the principals can't oversee the nuts and bolts parts of the custodial role. They just can't. It's not their, it's not in their, they're not going to oversee scheduling and, you know, all of that. It's ordering materials, any of the OSHA, you know, that's just, it's not how, so in most districts where the custodians work for the district, there's a lead, and we have lead custodians at each building, but there's a head of buildings and grounds or maintenance or facilities who works for the school and oversees all of the custodians. And that does have its own financial. Yeah, well, I think that we that there's a way to get around, and we'd have to have something hybrid because we don't control maintenance. So the 80% of a facilities manager's job is maintenance of grounds and buildings, not supervising the custodians. Right? Yeah, he's going to order stuff, and he, he's probably the, the, the lead guy to do risk analysis and OSHA regulation, stuff like that. Um, but I don't think we have to hire a $90,000 a year facilities no, manager. No. I, you know, I, think right. there's, I think there's other ways around that, because I, I know what you're talking about and the way that other schools are set up, and we're never going to have all of the maintenance and custodian stuff underneath the umbrella. But I think it's, it's going to be a fun experiment. Um, so the, the, the impact on the town side is if the custodians <coughs> came under, I mean, there was a person has that responsibility what does that impact his job mm -hmm. right and again that's why i said i think this is a long this is a long-term discussion it's got a lot of moving pieces I and mean, we can't solve this in two meetings so but is it something the committee wants us to continue to talk about shifting the mou at this point because we have we signed it for this year oh well it doesn't get signed in. it's not oh it doesn't so when, in, this, in any of this discussion, was it talked about, so I know we had an issue, I believe it was last year, where they were moving custodians around without really checking with any of the administration? So has that been discussed? Because that, that there... Yes. yes. That, would, that would fall under the principal. Okay. The principal would determine which personnel were in their buildings under this MOU shift that we discussed. But, and I know there's a big difference between saying the principals will have something and yep. then there being something in some kind of documentation or some kind of regulation or procedure or whatever policy that allows them to overstep the principles that under a certain circumstance and i think that needs to be looked at or, or at least because i, I understand that, where they're coming again, from sorry. would you say that last sentence again so procedure to i'll believe it when i see it <laughs> That's yeah, the yeah, yeah, exactly right so yeah. i can tell you all day that the principles will have you know the, the control over who works in their building but then there might be a policy or something somewhere else in DPW's uh, oh, realm that allows them to overstep the principal when they, f you know, feel fit or under certain circumstance or anything like that. Um, and I think we got to be careful or at least understand what that might entail. Because I do understand where they're coming from with the whole review part. 
you know, nothing against Mark, but what does Mark know about what a custodian does from the technical part, you know, as far as, you know, all their cleaning duties and all that, you know what I mean? That's not his job. He's not trained to do that. DPW is. Uh, so I do understand that piece to it, but I think to me, I do personally, I think that is a good way to pursue it, but I'm concerned about DPW overstepping, or I wouldn't say overstepping, but being able to somehow move personnel around in given circumstances and not leaving it 100% up to the principals. So the town manager did indicate that the next step, if we, if the school committee wanted us to continue pursuing this, would be to sit with the director of DPW, you know, have mm -hmm. that person in the room. And certainly anything, any language would not, we would have people, what well, you'd be looking at, but also I would imagine attorneys would look at. Um, but I got the sense, and maybe it's, maybe got a different sense, but I got a sense of that the town manager really seemed to understand this point after this meeting in a way that I hadn't before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Good. so I don't, I think we would have support from that side in a way that I would not have imagined we would have before. And maybe I'm naive, I don't know. Well, I mean, I, and we've also opened line of communication now, and one would hope that Patty can pick up the phone and talk yeah. to the town manager and say, okay, well, this is the MOU, and then somehow somebody got moved around. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. In the current contract, uh, with the, uh, the custodians have their own sort of contract and association. Right? There's that piece, too. Mm -hmm. I guess it's another layer. There. Yeah. But if if you want us to, then that would be our next step. <coughs> Town manager and the assistant town manager and director of DPW and tease it out and then just keep bringing stuff back to you. We all have feedback on that. Uh, I think. Well, when you guys were first speaking, I was my question was going to be: Were you persuaded that? we don't need to have the custodians under the control of the schools. And it doesn't sound like you, you were, uh, but that this is, as Jeff said, an interim step that will help alleviate some of the problems that we've had, potentially, that I'm aware of anyway, um, in terms of people being moved without the knowledge of folks like that. Um, I think the piece for the working group is really the longer term strategy, the financial implications of that. And I, um, I think Jeff, I'm in lockstep with Jeff's um, position. So I'm totally comfortable with that being discussed at that level until there's more to decide at this level. But I'm encouraged that uh, the town manager seems open to our perspective. And um, the proof is in the pudding though. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, go forth. Go forth and compromise. <laughs> yeah. Go forth. And, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. Yeah. All right. So does anybody disagree that she sh they should move forward in the current talks? Or just disagree. You got anything to say? I don't disagree. talked about that at the last meeting and you're going to vote on that today I did um, you know we had heard from Trisha Palanue I also heard back from Jesse uh, Baird at the tribe I completely support a change from Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day at the on the NPS calendar school calendar Mass Wampanoag tribe has already made the change in order to take the opportunity to educate others about the peoples that have inhabited this continent since creation placed the indigenous peoples here, their histories and ever-changing cultures. Thank you on behalf of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe for your efforts and ever cooperative stance regarding indigenous cultures. So um, we already know that they had changed on that. So it's your decision it would be a change. So you would basically <coughs> be voting to also change. Mm -hmm. We've already approved the calendars. Okay. Um, so I will make a motion that we change all references of Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day in any document um, propagated by the school department or school committee. Does that cover everything? Yes, the only place it appears is in the city contract for year round employees who are actually given holidays actually by the North to it. But it's referred to as Columbus Day. I think it's a have the handbooks already been printed? I would yeah. imagine, right? Because no. we voted on them. The, I 
Well, uh, do we have an issue because what's on the agenda for the vote is the change to the calendar? Oh, yeah. right. <clears throat> yeah. So I think we just have to Amen. make a motion just on it that. Necessarily. Oh, okay. Uh, because it is an item agenda, so it doesn't have to specifically be the calendar. Because it can be amended. Okay. So we're voting on changing uh, the meat and potatoes of it is that we're voting to change the language of Columbus Day for, <coughs> for the district. On the calendar or anything else, it's all the same, you know what I mean? So the only reason why in any other documentation it's called Columbus Day is because the calendar reflects it. It's Columbus Day. You see what I'm saying? Well, it's yeah. It reflects it because it's a federal holiday. Well, I understand yeah. that, but yeah. we put it on the calendar because it's a federal holiday, which is yeah. Yeah. kind of cascades into every other document because of it. So if it's on the calendar as one thing, you don't put it in another document as something different. It just doesn't make any sense. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. I just wonder whether that's legal, but um, <laughs> I, because I'm, I, I'm totally in support of the what's on the table. But yeah. I, I don't know if we can change a, a legal reference to Columbus Day, which is the federal holiday, mm -hmm. in our contracts. So you tell me. You're the chair. I don't know. But I just don't want to have to do this again. So if we could just maybe handle the calendar now and then deal with the. We can do that because I don't know if we'd be able to even change the. Contract anyway, the so. Well, you didn't see is that for um, this is their year. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you weren't saying we'd actually change those two. You just meant you were just indicating that's where the references are. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Well, I guess you have a simplification. We can just do the calendar, and then it's understood that anything that's on the calendar is going to be in any other documentation anyway for the schools. I'm not sure that's understood. Or wouldn't that be understood? So if I make reference to even on the contracts on holiday. <laughs> If the, just like we went through the whole thing of the start of the school day, if it's in the calendar as, you know, school starts on this day or whatever, then that's what we go by for the contracts. And that's what that whole argument was about. So if it's on the school calendar as Indigenous People Day and not Columbus Day, well, we go by what's on the school documentation. What I'm I see what you're saying, I mean, but I just want to cover all bases by saying any other document. Make whatever motion you want. But well, that's the motion I made. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a second yet. So. Any second? Can, can I amend the motion and just sure. uh, move to change the FY1819 school calendar from Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day? Second can, I make, can I make a oh, okay. second. Go ahead, were you gonna I was gonna see. make a suggestion to change the calendar starting with that way it's indefinite. Okay. So we're not I'll amend the motion then, yeah, yeah, we did change the uh, um, change from Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day starting uh, at the FY eighteen nineteen school calendar and beyond. I have a second. I second. Or unless you want to. We'll go ahead. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Motion by Jeff. Second by Nicole. Okay. I just don't want our, our uh, so the discussion piece, I just didn't want the vote to get negated because we overstepped. No, well, we can add this yeah. into any time. That's fine. Okay. So we'll That's all. I know you're trying to be efficient. I was yeah. just, well, I was just thinking about the school manual is going to be produced long before by our next school committee meeting. So, but if that can be changed by us saying the calendar. It's a cool, um, manual. School handbook. Oh, manual. I thought you said manual. I did Sorry. say manual. That's what I call a handbook. No, I um, did menu. I menu? Lunch menu is okay. <coughs> the hearing in here it's is right. bad. But yeah. okay. It's hard to hear. But if that can flow down to everything else, then I'm fine with it. Yeah. Do, do you agree that, I mean... Okay. It's in the handbooks. Can you say the head ladder, please? Okay. 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 I mean, it, it, I mean, it would be ridiculous for us to not to have it listed in the school calendar and then listed Columbus Day everywhere else. So. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so it should reflect the calendar. Got it. Yeah, got it. Understood. All right, I withdraw my motion, even though it wasn't seconded. <laughs>
But you amended uh, his motion, but it wasn't even seconded. He amended my motion, yes. You said motion. your motion wasn't even seconded, so... so yes, not. it was seconded. <laughs> no, it she was? seconded not. my motion. She <laughs> seconded his motion. Oh so we have, we have a motion by Jeff, second by Nicole. Okay, so forget George's. Forget George's. Forget George's. Everybody George. else does. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear, so... I never forget. I think so you're not really amending anymore. He's not amending, no. it's just okay. a motion. Just making one. I, I just making a motion. Okay. That's all. I just want to make sure. The motion that wasn't call. seconded. Hey, thank you for bringing this to the committee's attention and for your leadership on it. I really appreciate it, and uh, I don't know why we didn't think of it sooner. So, welcome. Okay. All right. Maybe ambivalent to this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Any other discussion? No. George. <laughs> One more time, do you want? <laughs> Nicole, how do you vote? Yes. 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 And yes, unanimous. Oh, it is so hot in here. It, it is. absolutely yeah. is. So there is air conditioning in this space, correct? But there is air conditioning in this yes. space. Right? Yes. And we Requested. actually physically requested air conditioning for this meeting and the last meeting, right? Yes. We shouldn't have air conditioning. Yeah. Probably in right I'm just asking that, that we requested <laughs> air conditioning for this meeting. Okay, I'm just making sure. And, and last night's performance as well. And last night's performance as oh, well. Drugstore theater, and, it and there was no air conditioning. No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and it's usually in writing. So subtle, Jeff. I'm just asking. <laughs> it, it really needs to. Now there's a person whose office is over here, so and it really needs to start being on for the next few days. Yeah. I assume that we have requested. We have an all-day event here on Monday in the auditorium that there will be air conditioning. But we had to call today because we had an event in here today. We asked to use the space with mm -hmm. human beings in it, mm -hmm. and but for a phone call, it wasn't going to be turned on. Did we turn it on? Hmm. We did. But it is that done through school, dude, or is that done through something else? It should, well, on the facility use form that everybody does when they want to use a space, I don't know if there's a spot to say air conditioning. There is. Mm -hmm. yeah. We usually check that. Always. And, and light. <laughs> and write it on the light. bottom. You, you have, have to request light. light. Yeah, that's awesome. It's amazing light. when it's 90 degrees outside. Yeah. I'm just curious. Thank you very much for filling me in. Okay. Mm -hmm. They voted on that. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't. Moving. Right we did. Oh, they did yesterday. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. We did. Sorry. Yes. We cleared all right. that We're out. Clear. <laughs> We're all done. Sorry. Sorry. Moving on. Best step ever. Okay. All right. So just as a follow up to the August retreat that you had. I don't know if we want to share any conversation about that because this is our first public meeting since then. Um, I did include in the packet your self-evaluation that we looked at that night. And um, also, not in the packet, but passed out, it looks like this, was sort of the draft we discussed, although I'm not sure about the 2B down below. But we wanted to sort of make sure everybody played around with the wording on those for, um, school year 18 -19. And just to uh, confirm for the public that the first half of the retreat, we all participated in an ethics training. Yes. Well, that was good. Lots of questions, too. Lots of answers. Does anybody have anything on that? I just wanted to thank you guys for doing all the hard work. I mean, you know me, I've always been a big proponent for retreats, and they get, they get better every time we have them. And even though I was, we appreciated the two-dimensional version. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even though I was electronic, <laughs> Max Headroom, Avatar. But I don't know. So um, I think I sent this to everybody. Yeah, you yes. did. And I, I looked at it online, and I thought there wasn't any wording that I would change. So I'm okay with the two A and two B, right? No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Was that a look of surprise? It was. It, I was the same look, yeah. <laughs> and we did discuss this at pretty fun. great length at the uh, retreat, <laughs> so. The only big one was 2B. We yeah. definitely, yeah. We, we slightly tweaked 1B with creating the operations manual, which is awesome. Yes. Uh, 1A is staying the same, and 2A is the same, and then Awesome. Yeah, I think 2B is right. I think that's when I, when you, I was freaking out a little bit when we locked out because I was like, oh my God, do we have to do this? And and I think calling it communicating the plan, is a, is really our role. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. All right. Yep. So we'll, uh, I guess we'll look to put this on the next agenda for at least a first read on the goals. I guess. No. Did we? It doesn't need votes. It doesn't. No.
We don't have to vote. We don't have to vote on goals. You don't have to make goals. I, that sounds awful. I think that we should have, I mean, a, a public yay or nay about it yeah. support the goals or not. Yeah. Maybe it takes you know milliseconds. Yeah. I guess it wouldn't hurt. No, no, it definitely hurt. Well, then I'll give it another look. <laughs> I've been knowing I've been voting on it. That was good. I, I knew that was. <laughs> all righty. I just want to do it to trap the goal. That's all. <laughs> oh. Next is the school committee meeting times. So I would like to see if there could be a conversation of how open you all are to adjusting the start time for our meetings moving forward. Oh, thank goodness. Is that the heat? Six thirty. No, that's my phone. Whether you know the summer meetings we held at five and how difficult that is or isn't for this group. I know John's not here. And whether there was any way to move them up moving forward to 5.30, 5. I'm totally in favor of moving it up to 5 o'clock. I may have difficulty hitting 5 every time, but yeah. uh, I, I do support moving the meetings up. 5.30, I think, might be a good, yeah. especially for me, too. Might be a good compromise. And this is with us getting a little bit of food before we roll in here. Get you food. Well, I was asking for that, but thank you very much. <laughs> I'll bring drinks if we start a fire. <laughs> so uh, I'm ha I would love to do it earlier. I think the reason it was easier to do five for the summer meetings is because there was only one a month. Um, the I think probably part of the rationale for having the 6:30 starts at least one was that the collaborative meetings start at five, oh, yeah. and they sometimes overlap with this this meeting, and so I frequently go there from five to six and then hot foot it from Osterville over here because they need quorum sometimes to, to have people there. So I'm all in favor of, of doing it earlier and let me just take a look at the, um, this because we have the published calendar of all the meeting, over, but I already noticed that there are a number of overlaps. So, um, but I mean, having said all that, my priority is to this table and you know, I can just, let them know in advance that I cannot m make those meetings that that overlap with ours. Um, but I think that might have been one of the rationales for keeping it at 630. So, but on a personal note, I could be here as early as 5 or 530, generally. So do you want to put it on for the next meeting again? Yes, because we'll have Don's here. And I think have more of a discussion. Mm -hmm. What time is the next meeting? That one's back to 6.30, correct? Yeah, the one's back to 6.30. Yeah. Does that need a vote? To change time. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, next time. I'm asking if you're putting it on the agenda. I would believe so, because we voted on the entire calendar yeah. with times. The times are on the calendar, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did we vote to change the times to five o'clock? We did. Oh. Okay. When we approved the calendar. It was on our calendar. It was on, it was our, on calendar. our calendar written that way. Oh. Okay. When we approved the year school committee meetings. So that means the next one's going to be six thirty, no matter what we do. Yes. I like that. But a star, unless we amend. So remember when we when we approved the, the year the chart that yeah. is all school committee meetings when we approved it for the year, we approved it with having the summer meetings. Five o'clock. Oh, okay. But we approved the rest of it at six thirty. Right. Right. Okay. I got it. Uh, I got you. Yeah, so if we were to change. Oh, for the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if we were to change like next meeting or whatever, we'd have understood. Yeah. Understood. I misunderstood. I thought you said we changed the whole year to five o'clock. No. 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 Yes, <laughs> and the new and library. And for some reason, Mary Kate's looking directly at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a comment about her space. <laughs> Never living it down. Never living it down. And then from there, hopefully, we have the full committee and we can discuss going forward. This okay. week. All right. Is that it? Anything else on that? <clears throat> nope. All right. Next is uh, new business. Does anybody have anything new they want to bring up?
Um, I, it's not, I guess I could have brought it up during the working group mm -hmm. because I think that's where I might deal with it. But I think you guys have heard me mention earlier that I wanted to do some sort of, um, it's not really an open house or an orientation, but it's a, sort of a, a way to teach people about what school committee members do to encourage more people to run for school committee in the town of Mashpee. And um, I talked to one of the selectmen about it too, and just this idea of, you know, doing kind of a, a, a some sort of meet and greet informational session. I think is what we were calling it, where there's really two of us mm -hmm. that to allow for <coughs> not breaking any rules, um, but to and to just sort of publicize it as like some type of evening session or even coffee session or something and just see if we have any if we can start recruiting people or generating interest and in, or most importantly helping people who think they may want to run understand mm -hmm. the responsibilities and roles of the school committee um, when I wanted to run you know I've been a parent in the district for years and when I wanted to run like one of the first people I called was Hope Hanscom it didn't work here at the time. it didn't work here at the time <laughs> but just and because she was an assistant superintendent elsewhere yeah. and she, you really helped me understand what was within our purview and what wasn't and, and things like that so I think um, when people think about what we do I don't know that they're always um, have I, I don't know that they know exactly what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do and what we get involved in and what we don't so I just thought it might be helpful and I also think that, you know, we need some succession planning. Um, I am so impressed with the contribution that Janice Mills made to this community, especially being a transplant myself, mm -hmm. you know, not being from growing up here. And, uh, but I cannot do this for 38 years. <laughs> and, um, and so, and I don't think any of us can no, for right. different reasons. So I, I just think we need to start grooming. <laughs> We need to start grooming educated interest and awareness in this role because I personally find it really rewarding and fun and you know and um, and I, I would love somebody's help if anybody is interested in joining me on that and if there's more than one of you that would like to help you can draw straws but um, but and also I'd love your input about how best to do that you know um, and maybe we do one or two. But the idea was to do it in kind of maybe before the holidays or maybe after the holidays in January before you have to pull papers, mm -hmm. I think in February or something, so that, um, mm. you know. Would, so, you, anyway. would you ever see that as a possibility of sort of merging like a night event with town government? Could they have trouble getting members on their board? And what does the board of select them? The well, that was exactly what we had talked about. Mm -hmm. Was the board of selectmen almost, like, almost like a job fair type yeah. thing, but job have representatives? Yeah. Food. Yeah. Food. <laughs> and, and it would be a nice collaboration. Yeah. That's what I had talked to yeah, one of the selectmen stuff. about. Was that they have the same issue? You know, they don't get a whole slate of people running for that office either. And you know, they, uh, between the two boards, you have a lot of authority in the town, and um, uh, they're pretty significant, you know, decision makers in the community. Maybe the selectmen more so than us, but but, um, but anyway. So yeah, I think they're interested in at least one of them. But I have to, if you guys are cool with the idea, I could go. We could pursue that a little bit okay. further. I'll work with you on it. You will. Sure. Okay. Is anybody else? I would be willing to. Yeah. No, I'm all for it. I just, you know, to play devil's advocate, we just have to be careful of the words that we're throwing around, succession planning and stuff. You know, as a committee, we can't go oh. pick somebody no. to, you know, to, to, to replace us and then stand, you know. I, so I just, I just want to be very careful the, yeah. way, oh, yeah. the way we word that and stuff. Yeah. I mean, anybody can stand out there singly and say, I support this person to be the next nice, yeah. um, school committee member. I just want to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. And even okay. if you ended up, I know town meeting gets a little bit, but if it piggybacked on something, or even if the different boards had, you know, <coughs> narrow little flyer handout, what does it, you know, mm. what does the school committee member do? Just some bulleted items. What does the selectman do? Just because something they could take home and then process it. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And run away screaming and crying. <laughs> 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 Never mind. <laughs> So that was that was the only thing I wanted to mention. That's a perfect thing to send to the outreach board, I think. I think so too, but I just didn't want to assume that without. That's perfect. That's like a out of the box outreach yeah. stuff. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. Good. Anything else? Any other new business? Anything anyone wants to see on the agenda next week? Uh, next week. Uh, All right. Subcommittee reports. Nothing for me. None. The, um, well, it wasn't really, it was, I guess it was, uh, the Addiction Task Force supported at the high school last night, Drug Story Theater. Um, it was, I don't know, it, it's a bad time of year in order to have that sort of thing, but our guess was about 100 people showed up. Uh, they asked. Yeah, I, I, well, I think he asked, uh, when he asked for a quarter of the audience to stand up, there were about 25 people that stood up there. And he said, well, this is about a quarter of the audience. That's why I'm getting. It wasn't as many as we hoped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's August. Yeah. But the people who came. Mm. Were very the, pay, the people who came got a lot out mm -hmm. of it. Uh, there were some excellent questions. Um, like everything else, it's just too bad it wasn't well attended. One of the things that came out of it after discussion on that was, and based on one of the girls in the story sharing, you know, her addiction and how she found it hard to sort of stay going to the group for the therapy piece, so she finds her therapy through this um, connection, but it would be really great to somehow create an in-house, whether it was labeled like a study hall, but it was more of a, you know, about counseling or give it a name where kids here who are facing challenges would be able to get supports. And they may not have gotten to the level of, you know, being um, sent away to a rehab center yet, but where they could have come back and we don't know. So something more in-house that was there for them where they could have other kids as well. So I would love to explore. And it could end up taking on sort of an after-school feel to it, but I think trying to provide something closer by to those who need it would be able to something to explore. And it would have to be done with, you know, counselors and, or school psychologists or the counselor. Yeah, I think we actually have a lot of that in place already, we, I would yeah. say. At the middle high school, we have girls groups that meet, and yeah. the counselors actually do a lot of what you just described, and then we're starting that Bright program, which is a program for kids who are been hospitalized or are school avoided, and they can come. They don't have to be on an IEP, but they can come just to get them into the building. Um, they're going to be able to come into a very safe, very therapeutic, very supportive environment. I mean, Mr. can speak about that more, but um, but yeah, we can always do. But these are the steps we're taking because of those needs that that we have. You know, I think that, so. We also like to bring them back this year. Um, for a day, another day performance and then a night performance in the hopes that families would come out at night after the kids have seen it during the day. Mm -hmm. so we'll be looking at that. Too. Good. Good. Don't worry, Mr. Bond, I got a copy. <laughs> Anybody else? What is this? Uh, committee reports. Committee reports. Any committee reports? I don't have a committee report. No, me either. I was just thinking about our attendance at that. Um, have we met since we went to the um, yes, we did. mass? Yes. Well, we, we had the uh, retreat. Retreat. Yes. Yeah, so they, um, I attended a session on social emotional learning and the uh, also on school start times implementation. And um, it's funny. Uh, you crack me up sometimes. I get these things from you, and I'm like, you're just like in lockstep with just sort of just everything i'm just so because so because one of the big things they said about social emotional learning is that what makes kids successful is relationships and i you handed out your letter to start the year and it's like the first paragraph she's like it's all about relationships i'm like god how does she do that um yeah so um so i that was that was really interesting because i had really no exposure to that um on the school start times thing they were really still focused on schools who wanted to to change and how to initiate that process. Um, but they did have a guy, the guy from Monomoy, Scott Carpenter, presented, and they are one year in 
um, and starting their second year of the new times. And so he had some feedback that I passed along to Patty. Um, but they, they're the ones who did the earlier elementary start time. So it, it was a bit of a different um, setup than ours. So that was all. And the two I went to, and I forget the name of the first one, but it was dealing with how the changes are coming with getting rid of level one, two, and three. And Oh yeah, you know, and all that stuff. Way too much information to even scratch the surface during this agenda item <laughs> on the. Uh, uh, but I suggest you look it up. There's a lot of big changes coming too, um, as I'm sure you will definitely know. Uh, the way that the district's going to be evaluated and how they're going to rank them and uh, yeah. all that good stuff. So uh, you know, as far as what they're adding and taking away from the report cards and big changes. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of them are actually very good. And then I went to on the second day was. Goals. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Got to put that to use, but that was uh, it was definitely a good conference. But that's about it. Anybody yep. else? All right, and uh, I don't believe there are any items uh, that we did not know in advance. If anybody has any, and we haven't had anybody else come in, so public comment is the next item on the agenda. There is no further public comment. Move to adjourn. So we have a motion to adjourn by George. We have a second. Second. Second by Jeff. Okay. Any discussion? None? Nicole? Yes. 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 And yes.